Hi guys, Liam Martin here coming back onto the YouTube platform with a series of short, snappy, composition-based YouTube tutorials uh, which are going to hopefully help you out with your product visualization. We're kicking things off with this video uh, where we're going to be recreating this beautiful iPhone 12 render in Keyshot as fast as possible. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please click the button down below so you don't miss out on any future tutorial videos. Other than that, I think you'll really find this one helpful and I hope you enjoy it. Right, so I'm starting off with the model, which is already dressed with bog standard materials from the Keyshot library. Only texture I've used in this is the wallpaper on the emissive material at the front. So I'm going to duplicate this phone now to make a copy of it, spin it round, move it into place. like so, and lift it up on the Y axis. Next up, we're gonna set the camera. So over to the camera tab, add in a new camera. I'll call this camera iPhone. And then I'm gonna change the lens to be orthographic. That removes perspective, which is what Apple do in a lot of their e-commerce shots. Next up, I'm gonna enable a quarters grid. So I get a line right down the middle. And then I'm going to try and match up what I'm seeing on the left. Okay, so that looks about right to me. Okay, turn my grid back to non, save and lock the camera. Now the camera can't move. That's the benefit of adding in cameras. You can save and lock them and uh, you can add as many as you want. Over to the environment tab now, we're only using HDRI lighting in this scene and the only number I want you to pay attention to here is that the size of the environment is two meters, which means it's more than big enough to hold these phones. It's about the same size as a photography scoop. Over to the HDRI editor where we'll spend most of the time in this mini tutorial and we need to add in a new environment because we don't want the startup default. So I'm gonna add in another environment and we'll call it iPhone. It will have picked up all the same settings from startup. Now the background, we're gonna to change to be solid black, which essentially turns off all the lights in the scene, apart from the emissive material, which is the screen, the wallpaper. And then we can start layering up this render. I'm gonna add in a pin using that button there. And the first pin we'll put in, will sit behind the phones and will act as this blue backdrop here, projecting vague, uh, subtle blue light onto the phone. Because backdrops are quite large, I'm going to increase the radius of that pin to 60. And then I'm just going to take note of the light bleed around the sides to make it even. Already looking pretty good. Let's change the color of this pin. And I'll use the eyedropper tool to select this color there, the blue. Then click OK. And then I'm going to bring the brightness of this pin down to 0.8 because backdrops don't emit light. Really, they just reflect it. So they shouldn't be that bright. While we're here, let's go back to the main environment settings and change the background to be a solid color. So we're not actually seeing that pin in the background. Now we're going to change our background color to match the Apple render as well. So we've got a solid background color with a pin sat behind the product as well. Back in the HDRI editor, we can start adding in feature pins which are gonna light up the front side of this product. All you need to do is look for the reflections on here, add in a pin and see how many pins you need to achieve the same reflections. So add in another pin. This first pin, I'm gonna aim for this corner and I'll make sure the set highlight feature is active in Keyshot and that feature is blue. And before we actually set the highlight, I'm gonna increase the radius of this pin to 40 and add some fall off so it's not so sharp. Now with the set highlight feature active, I can click and drag on my model and bring that reflection round to that corner. Okay, now we can juice the brightness of this. So I'm gonna bring the brightness of that pin up to probably around three, I think three looks about right. And then we can right click and duplicate that pin. So right click and duplicate to create pin number three, carbon copy of pin number two. And again, we can use our set highlight feature and bring the reflection of this pin round. 
Okay, put it on the other corner like this one. Now, one thing I noticed when I put this in for the first time is that this pin over here also lights up really nicely that top edge of the camera bump. You can tell it's that pin is when you toggle them off, you lose that reflection. Now, I'm going to push this round slightly so it bleeds over a little bit more. So I'm just going to move that pin manually round, push it to the side. And that also looks good. Again, do we need to reduce the brightness? Maybe we'll reduce the brightness of this one up to four and maybe we'll increase the radius of this one just a bit. Okay, so that's the main two pins done. Now I'm gonna focus my efforts on the rounded edges or the fillets in here. We've got fillets on the edge of the metal band. We've got fillets on the edge of the buttons and we want to pick those up as Apple have done in their render. So let's add in a new pin. And then we shall simply use the set highlight feature, which is already active, to position it on that fillet at the side there. Okay, let's juice the brightness. So we'll go brightness of three in this case. And now you can see that we've got that pin really nicely picking up the edge of the phone and also round the edge of the buttons as well. The last pin I'll add in is to try and add this reflection over in the top left hand corner of the camera bump where it's really bright. So I'm going to duplicate pin number four, use my set highlight feature and put it in that top corner. This one I'm going to make a bit smaller. So I'm going to go for a radius of 20 and then we can juice the brightness again. So I'm going to go brightness up to five for this one. Uh, Coincidentally gives us a really nice edge on the corner here and we get a slightly brighter reflection up there as well I'm gonna leave it there. How quickly did we get to that result using the HDRI editor and one camera? So I'm gonna leave it there by all means try and recreate this yourself But the main thing is have a play and see what lighting setups you can create using this same method Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, uh, give the video a like. Make sure you get subscribed down below if you're not already. Other than that, uh, again, I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.